Hello and welcome back. So in last few lectures, we created two entities for our NestJS application. We created a user entity and we created a profile entity. And for those entities, tables are also generated in our PostgreSQL database. Now, when working with a relational database like PostgreSQL, MySQL or Oracle, we will always have a relation between two or more tables. So for example, our user entity is related to profile entity. Whenever a user will be created, for that user, we will also have some profile details like the profile image, the first name and last name of the user, the gender of the user, date of birth, bio, etc. So there, we want to have a relation between user table and profile table so that whenever we fetch the details of a user along with the user email and username, we can also fetch the other user details like the gender of the user, the first name and last name of the user, profile picture, etc. So for that, we will have to establish a relation between user table and profile table. So in this lecture, we are going to understand what is a relation, what are the different types of relation and how we can implement relation between two tables. Now here, we are not going to go to the database table and define the relationship there. Instead, we are going to define the relationship between two or more tables from our entity class itself. So before we learn how we can do that, let's understand what is a relationship and why relational databases uses relationship between the tables. So in a relational database like PostgreSQL, MySQL, Oracle, etc., we store related data in different tables and create a relation between them using primary key foreign key references. So for example, let's say I have a user table and I have a tweet table. Now a user will make one or more tweet. So if you see in the user table, we have user related data and in the tweet table, we have tweet related data. We have the tweet ID, the date when that tweet was made, the tweet text. And along with that, we are also storing the user ID of the user who has made that tweet. So, for example, for this first tweet, this tweet was made by the user with user ID 1. And if you go to the user table, the user with user ID 1 is John. So, here, instead of storing the tweet data and the user data in the same table, we have two different tables, one table for user, one table for tweet. And tweet table is storing a reference of rows from user table in this user ID column. So basically when we say user ID one, that means this tweet was made by user with user ID one and that user is John. So here we have a relation between the tweet table and user table. Here the user ID is the foreign key of this tweet table, which is storing the primary key of the user table. The primary key for the user table is this ID column which is storing some ID values. So these ID values are primary keys. So in the tweet table, in the user ID column, we are storing the primary key of user table. And in this way, we are relating this tweet table with the user table. Instead of storing all the data related to tweet and the user in the same table, we have separated it into two tables and then we are relating those tables. So the relational database relies heavily on relation between tables and we avoid storing related data in the same table. There are also different types of relations that you can create between tables. For example, two tables can have a one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many relationship and many-to-many -many relationship. And we are going to talk about each of these relationship types in brief in a bit. But before that, let's first talk about the advantages we have when we use relation between the tables. So first of all, when we use relation between tables, we store related data in two different tables and it avoid redundant or duplicate data. For example, if you see when we are storing the tweet and user detail in the same table, for example, here we have the tweet ID, the date when the tweet was created, the tweet text, and then we also have the user details like which user made that tweet, what is his email ID, what is his gender, what is his password, etc. So all the information we have in the same table. But if you see here, we have duplicate data. For example, 
the first tweet and the third tweet was made by the same user even though the tweet data is different but the user details are same so basically we are repeating the same user detail in two different rows of this tweet column in the same way the second tweet and fourth tweet was made by the same user even though the tweets are different they were created at different times and their text is also different but these tweets are made by the same user so we are repeating the details of that user in this tweet table and in this way we have redundant data now in future let's say we want to update the email of the user we will have to go ahead and update it in all the rows for that user in the tweet table so for example let's say mark has changed his email then in the tweet table we will have to search for all the rows where the username is mark and then we will have to change his email everywhere and in this way maintaining the data is also very cumbersome but instead of storing the user related data and tweet related data in the same table if we store it in two different tables like this then we just have to store the user id of the user and in this way we have very less redundant data we do have redundant data in this user id field but that is okay because somehow we need to reference this user table from this tweet table for the user details so we need some way to connect to user table from the tweet table and for that we are storing the user ids and in future if mark changes his email id we need to change that only in one place we will not have to do it at multiple places and that change will reflect everywhere so this is one advantage with relationship we avoid redundant or duplicate data another advantage is on each column of a table in relational database we specify the data type for the value we are expecting and also the constraints like whether that column should be nullable or not and we can also provide some default values for a column if the user does not pass a value for that so for example in this name column when we specify its data type as string only the string values can be inserted in this column if we try to insert a numeric value or a date value the database will throw an error so this is another advantage in a column once we specify the data type the constraints and other things only a valid value can be inserted in that column of the table so we will always have accurate data in the table and another advantage is flexibility so since we store related data in related tables it provides more flexibility why because while developing your application you can start small with few columns for a table for example let's say when we are developing our application we don't know what details we want to store for a user so at that time we decided that we only want to save the name email and gender of the user but later the requirement changed and there we also want to allow user to save his profile image add some bio and also specify from which country he belongs to so instead of going and updating our user table with all those fields what we can do is we can create a new table itself where we are going to store the new required data and then we can simply go ahead and define a relation between this profile table which is newly created with the user table so in the user table we just have to add one column the profile id column which is going to store the id from the profile table or even better what we can do is instead of adding this profile id column in the user table we will not touch the user table at all instead we will add a user id column in the profile table itself where it is going to store the user id of each profile which we have created in the profile table so there we will not have to even touch the user table we can simply create a new profile table and in that profile table we can store the user id for which the profile is created and in this way relational databases are quite flexible we can add new information for a given entity by creating a new table and then creating a relationship between that new table and the existing table i hope this point is clear now let's talk about different types of relations which we can have between two tables as i mentioned between two tables we can have one to one relation one to many relation and many to many relation let's understand them one by one with an example so in a one to one relationship we have one row in one table 
which will have a single related row in second table. For example, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between user and profile. For a user row in the user table, there will be one and only one row in the profile table. One user cannot have multiple profiles, right? One user will have a single profile. So in the user table, we have one user record. And for that user, we have one row in the profile table with that user's profile data. So here we have one to one relationship. And also a single profile will belong to a single user in the user table. So in the other direction also, we have one to one relationship here. For example, let's say while signing up the user, we are going to store the user details in the user table. So there will be one record for each user which we are creating. And then once the user has created his account, after that, he can also go ahead and create his profile. He can add his bio, his details like gender, date of birth, country, city, etc. So these details the user can add later. But here, one user will only have one profile. He is not going to have multiple profiles. So in this way, between the user table and the profile table, we have one to one relation. Then we also have one to many relation in a one to many relation. One row in one table will have multiple related rows in the second table. For example, let's say we have a user table and we have tweet table. Now one user can make multiple tweets. So one user in the user table will have multiple related tweets in the tweet table. So for example, here we have a user and this user can make multiple tweets. As you can see, one user have multiple tweets here. So there is a one to many relationship between the user and his tweets. All right. And in the opposite direction, we have many to one relationship. So many tweets in the tweet table will have one related user in the user table. So the opposite direction is called as many to one relationship. And we will see when we should use one to many relationship and when we should use many to one relationship with some example when we will start implementing relationship between the entities. Then we have many to many relationship. In a many to many relationship, one row in first table will have multiple related rows in the second table. And one row in second table will have multiple related rows in first table. Here, let's take an example of post and tags. So one post can have multiple tags. For example, let's say I'm creating a post on Angular. So for that post, I can have multiple tags like Angular, TypeScript, JavaScript, etc. And one tag can also belong to multiple posts. So for example, this TypeScript can be relevant for Angular related post because in Angular also we use TypeScript language and it can also be relevant to nest.js related post because in nest.js also we use typescript so one post can have multiple tags and one tag can be assigned to multiple posts so here we have many to many relationship so for example let's say we have one post related to angular development and we have one post related to nest.js development now these posts we are storing in post table and the tags we are storing in tags table so as you can see, one post here have multiple tags and tag can be assigned to multiple blocks. For example, if you see this TypeScript tag, it is present for both of these posts. So post have a one to many relationship with tags and tag has a one to many relationship with posts. And in this way, it creates many to many relationship. I hope you got the point. So this was a brief overview of each type of relation we can have in a relational database. We will learn more about these relations in detail and how to implement them in our coming lectures. But I hope you got a high level idea of how these relations are defined in relational database. We also discussed about the advantages of having a relation between two tables. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.